My name is Insane Raven, and today I'm reviewing Black Panther, Marvel Studios' latest movie into the MCU, and I'm gonna try to talk about this movie and not get called a racist in the comments. And I'm not saying that this movie is bad. Not that is not by any means what I'm saying, or by any stretch of the imagination, is this a bad movie? I'm just worried that if I say one thing about the movie that I didn't like, that people are gonna be like racism, and that won't be fun. So let's try to make that not happen. Um, and the goal of this is just to not have that happen. All right. Um, so now that being said, I do think this is probably one of the better Marvel movies to be made, if only because every character is worth watching and worth caring about. And it's not, unlike Thor, which they were able to swap out half the cast in the second movie, or swap out half the cast in the second movie, or in parts of Avengers Age of Ultron or Civil War where there were too many characters, where you didn't know where everyone was at certain points, and, or you just didn't care because you were like, there's another really cool thing over there. Um. This movie doesn't have those issues. It doesn't have those balancing act issues. And that's amazing, if I'm honest. Like, because they do easily have the potential of losing their characters. With as many characters that we just got basic introductions to um, in Civil War, th there was the possibility that you could lose a couple of characters in the fray. And happily, that didn't happen. That wasn't a concern we had in the film. Uh, you did get... I do want to talk about uh, Michael B. Jordan's uh, Killmonger, which is which is easily the best Marvel villain um, to show up in one of these MCU movies. For the pure... Uh, reasons that I actually gave him not only something to do, but a reason for doing everything besides I want to be evil. And I, I do think that out of all the villains that Marvel's kind of cranked out out of the years, he's probably the the closest villain I'd stack up against uh, Magneto in the X Men franchise. Because, not just because, like, I'm not, and I'm not saying he's as good as Magneto. What I am saying is that he's a villain that, like Magneto, I care about. Which hasn't happened since Magneto. Um, and it's interesting to see how that dynamic now works, now shifts with Marvel. And how Killmonger was dealt with. The other thing I'm kind of curious about is if they do plan on doing a sequel, um, where would they kind of go with, uh, where would they kind of go with it? They did set up a couple of other villain. they did set up one other villain who might come into play, but by the end of the movie, he is a little bit of a, he's more of an ally than an enemy, and I'll talk about more of that in our spoiler section, um, but that is something that I wanted to kind of touch on. Now, the humor in this movie is something that I really enjoyed. Even though a lot of it seems like 2016, there's a one of those joke in this movie, guys. I, I don't I don't know. There is a one of those joke in this movie. And that's probably one of the things that um, is the movie's greatest weakness in a way. Because of how fast a uh, meme culture and all these other things kind of like run, the jokes that this movie makes, from when it was written, that would have been like the greatest things on the planet, now are just old and they seem almost tired out. Which somehow creates this amazing uh, duality between the characters of. I absolutely hate all these characters for making these jokes, but they're also endearing, and somehow I love them for making these exact same shitty jokes. 
uh, T'Challa's sister, whose name I'm currently forgetting because I'm recording this the day after and I'm really tired, so please don't hate me, um, is easily my favorite character. Like, the first time we really see her on screen, she's greeting her brother, the king of her country, and then she immediately flicks him off. It's like, oh, that is all I needed to see out of this character, and I now understand you. Um, I'm thankful I had that moment. And from then on out, we're just seeing the, her character kind of just come through. From her being this incredible dork, but also being this intelligent and just beautiful, powerful character. It's amazing. Um, but she makes a one of those jokes. She's like, she ends up recording a video of her King Gang knocked on her, knocked on his ass, and just laughing all the way, claiming his full research. Um, she's easily just like my favorite character in the movie, and uh, I absolutely love it. Then there's all the other, then there's the other characters of like the best friend who you know has his own. Uh, groups and hatred and things and then there's the bodyguard again i am terrible with names and i, I i'm con uh, i should have done research i should have been like hey let me just double check those names real quick but i didn't and i'm sorry and i'm an asshole i understand this um but you know you have the other characters kind of like doing their things and whatnot and it's a good time and but each character even though i've forgotten their names because i can't do names to save my life. Um, they're each they each seem important. They each given a bigger role within the movie. None of them are there just to be there and just to fill up space, which is something that I really enjoy. Um, but if you want to kind of break this movie down into what this movie is, it is almost a cultural study of Wakanda. Um, you, you see how they deliver new monarchs, you see how they kind of go through um, the tests and trials of the new monarchs, you see how each of the tribes that have come together to form this country reside, you see how they've survived for all these years, you hear the discussions of do they go in this new direction of what we would call being liberal or what you would call being more conservative at least in America if you want to be traditional or if you want to be um, going to this new direction which is something that I, don't, I think is really interesting to see um, to kind of see, watch this country m at, at a tipping point even if it is a fictional country it's fascinating to see um, and the other thing I really enjoyed about this movie with the exception of the first 10 minutes that shows, yes, we are still in 2016. Um, we are a week after Civil War. And a week after that, um, there are, there's really no real reference to any of the other Marvel movies. It, it's one of the few Marvel movies at this point where you can where you can just watch this movie and understand everything you're supposed to understand. And with those becoming more and more real every day, I didn't realize how much I wanted that out of a Marvel movie until I went into theaters and watched this film. I was like, oh, I didn't know I wanted to not have to do homework before I watched the movie. Um... And real quick side rant, like, it's not even, uh, something that has to do with the movie. I don't know if, like, the movie industry is taking a shit, but all the trailers I saw, like, go, like, for this movie, as I was sitting there watching this movie, just looked fucking terrible. Like, none of them seem good. None of them seem even remotely good or interesting, and I hate the movie industry. Back to Black Math, though. Um, you bad guy out there. but, you know, when we really have this, like, case study of this country, and we have this time period 
of when we have this time of like this is when everything is going down um it was interesting to kind of see how everything kind of progressed and I did go see it with Rogue, and one of the things that we were both talking about is that we were confused on only one thing. Um, and that was, if this takes place a week after Civil War, where's the Winter Soldier? He wasn't referenced or anything. And I was under the impression that, at this point, that he was, I know he had already left Wakanda. Or that there was something that happened there because there are all there were in the Infinity War trailers he is you know there so I was kind of confused on how that worked so kind of just like let it be for a little bit I was like I'm just gonna let that be its thing I'm not gonna really discuss it um but then we, as we were kind of like asking these questions, we actually got an answer to that, so that was kind of cool. Um, visually, this movie has amazing just visuals. There are so many visuals that could easily be like empty, that are easily like paintings in this uh, in this movie. Like there are shots that are absolutely amazing. Like the guys that are hanging out in the caves, like their his throne room. It's just fucking cool looking. Um, like, there's so much that just looks fucking cool in this movie. Um, there's just so much that looks either really just fucking cool or just it looks right in some way. It's amazing. Um, if I'm honest, um, because that's something that Marvel hasn't really done well in the past they haven't created these beautiful moments these beautiful like pictures they've done really well with creating these awesome sets and these out of the crazy like off the fucking walls uh shit but they haven't created just like slices in time where you can just sit back and be like oh this is beautiful type thing um but they did here it was a really great showing of of that um, so I, I wanted to give some props to that. I also wanted to give some props to the fact that, uh, the gas just has a lot of fun with this movie. And I don't mean that, like, in a patronizing, oh, you, you look like you had fun up there when you're going to, like, your friend's play or something. Like, they're just generally, like, genuinely naturally fitting into these roles and they're just like yeah good times good times um so now i want to bring up like so besides like the jokes being a bit old and stale which was weird it was weird that people got um were still laughing and i'm not like because i mean i gave a cringe chuckle it was 100 percent a cringe chuckle i was like ooh. Marvel just made a one of those joke. <laughs> that hurts my soul. Um, because you know, like, do you expect Marvel to be like above memes in a way? Like, they create their own memes, and I'm so worried that this is gonna bring back the one of those memes, and that'll be a sad day if uh, those actually come back. Um, that'll be a sad day if those come back, but. You know, thank you, Marvel overlords. I, I hate you. But all in all, like, it's a great movie, and it's going into this movie. You know, it's going to be a good movie. Not because it's a Marvel movie. I've had my grievances with Marvel movies, but you know, it's going to be a good Marvel movie because Marvel felt like they had something to prove here. They felt like this was something that they had to, they had to like make good because it's the first Black Panther movie. And this is something that we see in Marvel a lot is that when it's the first movie in a new series, they make it 20 times better than the, than most of the other movies. Like let's look at Avengers. Let's look at Guardians of the Galaxy. Let's look at, uh, fucking, Iron Man, the original, like, 
these were great fucking movies that their sequels fell off the wayside because they didn't have to try anymore. You know? And that's the kind of pattern we see established here. And I hope that's not the case. I, I'd rather it'd be a one and done type scenario um, versus a let's beat this horse into the ground until it's absolutely dead and then we're not but you know that's just me also my phone is going off let me deal with that right now look at this it's live and in the making cool okay so let's all right so now let's go into spoilers if you don't want the movie to be spoiled you're you're in the end please back up um, I'll see you guys next time and if you would like you can come back and you can hang out with us later after like everything gets reviewed and stuff so I need to run um yeah anyway, that, that could be fun it'd be a good time um if not man eh, thanks for hanging out now if you're still out you don't get you don't give a fuck about spoilers all you saw last night like I did so give or take your reasoning, I don't care. We're going in the spoilers. So, with this movie, a lot of it goes into what direction, what type of king is T'Challa going to be? And, you know, you, you kind of see him going into his back story. You kind of see him uh, developing his style. And you see that he has, that his love interest is very much like, we have the resources. We have everything we could ever need to help heal the world and there's no reason why we shouldn't be taking that stance and but you also see that is that the that's the same kind of ideology and the same uh feelings that all of the villains have all the antagonists in this movie are have the exact same ideology and the same philosophy and they're like and and that's one of the things that I really love about Eric Killmonger and Michael B. Jordan's performance is that his character like he's probably the only Marvel villain to have a reason for being a villain and I kind of mentioned this earlier but his whole thing is that when I was there you know we were getting killed and we were you know, we were doing all this shit. <laughs> and you could have stepped in at any time. You could have come in and saved us. But you didn't. You and your... You and your country... You and our... You and your people... Did nothing to save your people. Because only all your people... Only all... Your people. Like, life... Life started in Africa. So is isn't every every human being your people and I don't understand how you can not help us so now we're going to force you to help us we're going to take your vibranium and we're going to send it out in mass to everyone we're going to set we're going to be liberators and then once everyone is free we'll be able to lead them and we'll be able to unite everyone under one people and it was absolutely fascinating. Like, not only listening, not only watching, the villains have this very strong uh, position, but then also having the love interest have the same position and have T'Challa kind of lean into, we have to do more, we have to do more out there, we have to be more, um, we have to do more almost the outreach. Uh, type things so when it really comes to and like being antagonistic there really isn't that feeling it's more of a you're everyone wants the same thing but you're doing it the wrong way which is something that's kind of fascinating to watch and kind of amazing to witness and be a part of also, I'm sorry that my game audio was on for so long and it's been 20 minutes. Ah, don't hate me. Um, and it's this absolutely amazing thing to see out of a Marvel movie when their villains have been one note, I'm evil because evil is fun, 
type characters. And it was absolutely great to not see that kind of like show up in this movie when it very easily could have. Because the villain, let me remind you, was called fucking Killmonger. It was real easy just to make a by the numbers uh, paint me villain. And they didn't. And I was, I was proud of them. I was proud of them for not fucking it up, essentially. Um, so not only do they have that uh, going for them, but you see how all these characters are interacting, and you see how uh, how much pride there is in this nation for their customs and for their way. And you definitely see that between some lines... The love for one's country is stronger than all. And there's a scene where the lead general and her and her lover are on opposite sides of the war, and on opposite sides of this fight, uh, with the lover, the, the lover and T'Challa's best friend saying, T'Challa failed us. He was supposed to bring us justice for this 20-year-old crime and didn't. And this new king did it within a matter of minutes. And even though he's not technically king because the trial hasn't been uh, settled, I will serve him as king. And you kind of see them on the opposite sides of this fight. And he asks, her, and he asks the general, he goes, will you really kill me? And she go, And she responds back, for my country, absolutely. Or oh, something along those lines. And something along the lines of, for my country, I will kill you. But it's this powerful moment where it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, and it was amazing. Because they have, like, in that moment, they kind of, they give you this, another, like, picture. Well, they're standing they're standing against each other, opposed, and they're standing against each other, opposed, and the you have the sunrise kind of hanging out behind them. You have the sunrise kind of hanging out behind them, and there's a battle right now behind the general, and just watching this all kind of unfold and having this painting, well. You know, he he realizes what he's, like, what the best friend has done to his country. Out of vengeance, out of hate, out of spite, out of this 20-year-old quest. This 22-year-old quest at this time of vengeance. He's literally ripped his country in half by uh, supporting his fighter, having his fighters support this, uh, Killmonger. Um... And just kind of watch all that unfold. I'm a little sniffly. If you haven't noticed, you've probably noticed because I've sniffled and been gross a couple of times already in this video. Um, but it like, and it's amazing to see how these kind of things interact and how you, how they f unfold. And the movie kind of comes as a climax with, you know, um, T'Challa revealed to not have been killed, which. It's a Marvel movie. They're not going to kill. Um, so you kind of see this just playing out. And that kind of goes into the big overarching theme of the film of do you want to stay within tradition? Or do you want to stay within uh, the safety of knowing what we've always done versus going off in this new direction and almost being a being a savior to the world within a way um and those are the kind of things that i thought was really interesting the other thing that someone's gonna be upset about it and i just like i want to talk about it here but the end credit scene the first one anyway um because there, there are two which thank god there's not seven and a fucking half oh my god there was like ugh. If I had to watch another Marvel movie with seven end credits, I was going to go insane. Um, but, uh, like, with the movie already being 
political in its nature of, you know, we're telling the story of uh, traditionalism, traditionalist and liber- and being liberal. And, uh, you know, this is the story we're kind of telling. Um, it, it was kind of important. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Um, I, I do feel like this movie is going to ruffle up some feathers with its second cutscene well with the second scene cutscene huh? well uh you know T'Challa is doing this press conference and he he's not talking about um how T'Challa how Wakanda is going to be stepping up and you know being this force uh within the UN at this UN meeting and they, he kind of goes along the along goes along the lines of saying, um, "We're going to start sharing. We're going to start. We're not going to hide in the shadows anymore. We're going to be upfront about things, and we're going to kind of show off what we can do. And we're going to be here." And he kind of throws in this line where leaders burn bridges. Our leaders, you know make bridges and they go forth and they continue making steps and fools make barriers and it it almost feels with this movie being such a nationalist versus uh you know world view type of movie um a nationalist versus globalist type of movie with just it's like with the direction of where it's going, with the main conflict being, well, who do we kind of support within this? Do we go with traditions and stay um, within boundaries, or do we, you know, help the world and show what we can do in this type of thing? I I am kind of concerned that it might catch some heat from that. Um... Which, you know, would be concerning if it did. But, you know. Uh, but that's pretty much the gist of it. Is that... So, Killmonger and... So, back to the actual movie. So, Killmonger and uh, Black Panther are, you know, fighting. And they kind of reach this climax where... They're going. They're fighting through this vibranium mine, and T'Challa kind of like realizes how he can take out Killmonger because he's w- he's wearing the same suit. It's the same type of uh, Stanley fight that we've come to expect at this point, and it comes down to this moment where they're like, okay, he stabs Killmonger, and he starts. At this point, like, we've seen his backstory, we've seen why he's doing all this, we've seen every, everything why he believes, and he says, you know, and he repeats something that his dad said earlier in the film, earlier, as a, uh, as a, in a, from a flashback, he goes, you know, my daddy used to say that Wakanda was the most beautiful place, and he, he said he was going to bring me here, can you believe it, or can you, something along those lines, and T'Challa is like, Okay, and as he's like, as he still has his like knife in his gut, and he's kind of just like sticking out there, and it's fucking amazing. Um, Dajala takes him up, and he sees the sun set on uh, Wakanda, and he's kind of just sitting there. And as the sun goes down, you see Eric, uh, Killmonger. He's just kind of like, oh, he was right. And T'Challa's like, you know, it's not too late. We could still save you. We could still, um, you know, you can still live here. We can, you can still, you know, you're trying to push this, uh, this piece of, you know, you can be here. You can live in Wakanda. You can, it'll be all right type thing. We can, we can work through this. And he, and he makes this statement which was fucking amazing he's like 
nah, you can bury me at sea with my brothers and sisters who jumped off the ships because they knew that death was better than bondage. And he takes out the knife, throws it inside, and he just dies. And it made me kind of make two... I was sitting there, I was like, that was such a moment. And then I had to think, it was like, is there... Does Black Panther have it in his comic books where, like, every time a hero has been... A villain's been brought to justice or is killed in front of him, he has to, like, have some alignment with the sun. <laughs> to either rising or setting. Because I was very confused why that's twice now. We've kind of had this image of the sun doing its thing. While the child is like trying to give redemption. Um, I don't know. It was just something that I found was interesting. And I, I'm, I'm curious now. Because you know we can kind of get this feel of how. Uh, the MCU generation 2 is going to work. You know. We see that uh, uh, Doctor Strange is going to take over for uh, Tony Stark in the, you know, rich asshole vibe. Um, we see that uh, now T'Challa is going to be taking over for the nationalist uh, homeboy for Steve Rogers, you know, that character arc. So it is kind of interesting to see where all these characters at the end are going to kind of line up. And I'm curious to see how it's all going to kind of work. How MCU Mark II is going to fully function. They are putting down the groundwork. That is interesting to see. And, you know, Doctor Strange and... Black Panther were definitely movies that showed that off and definitely were like, yes, this is what, this is the direction we're going. Um, and it is going to be interesting to see how that works. And I'm excited for it. But I do, you know, I just hope that it's worth it, for lack of a better way of saying it. I just hope that. Um, you know, the MCU point two, uh, is worth getting invested in and, you know, continue to bring characters that we watch. Cause at this point, I think we have to, be, everyone has to be honest with ourselves. We, we watch these for the, for the characters and for the hopes that, you know, the action's good that we can turn off our brain. <laughs> um. More than anything else, so that's really all I have to say with it. So in summary, the movie's jokes are a bit dated. Some of them are just dated. <laughs> um, the characters strike a mix of "I hate you" and "I love you," and it's a very political film. Um. When it comes to Wakanda. And I know there's going to be some people who are like, Oh, they're talking about America. But whatever. Um, the, like, I've even described it as a nationalist versus globalist uh, film. So, you know. I, I don't mean that in like a bad way. I mean, like this is the debate that this movie brings up type thing. But some people are going to be like, You should boycott this movie. Everyone's in it black. They're trying to like, push a globalist agenda. Ah! So, you know. Uh, <laughs> politics to fun. Um, but other than that, I don't have anything else to add. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Ben Insane Raven. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.